Hey there guys, welcome back to another video. So today we'll be taking a look at the Scepter 27 inch 1080p 240Hz gaming monitor. A big thanks to Scepter for sending me a loaner unit to review. So this monitor came well packaged and it comes with a nice little user booklet and a cool little screwdriver with the branding on it. It also comes with a 5 foot DP cable that should be long enough for most users. The monitor comes with a nice high adjustable stand. It is very easy to install the neck to the base. You can use the included screwdriver or just hand tighten it. The stand has a convenient quick release plate that makes mounting super easy. You can quickly get the monitor on and off the stand. It is also very easy to raise and lower it. All it takes is a little bit of force and it's really smooth. You also get some back and forward tilt on here and it also swivels. So this is a nice versatile stand. They even threw in a red cable management clip to help keep the cables nice and tidy. Now if you will be mounting this to a monitor arm, you will need to attach the mounting bracket that it comes with. It comes with some standoffs so that the bracket sits flush with the back and this bracket will make it so that it is compatible with the 75 by 75 VESA mount. The screws that I have are a little too long for this bracket but I was able to find two short screws so my setup right now looks a little janky. So there's two long screws and two short screws holding it in place. I didn't bother buying some new screws for this since I will be sending this back. The good thing is that the monitor is very light so it won't slide off. So the design of the back looks really nice and has RGB lighting on the left and right. But you won't really notice it much since the RGB is not that bright to bounce off the wall. And this is the same with many other monitors, not just this one. For most of them, the RGB is just not as strong, but it looks cool. On the bottom, they nicely laid out stickers letting you know the information for each port. And it makes it super easy to know which HDMI port to connect to. It's a nice little touch. This has some very slim bezels on the side and the top, and the chin is a little thicker like most modern monitors. This is using a VA panel and I'm really impressed with the color reproduction on here. It has a 99% sRGB coverage that looks fantastic. Something that I noticed right away when turning the display on is that the panel is very bright. I had to lower both the backlight and the brightness in the settings. It's going to be great to play the open world adventure games on here. The image is very vivid and clear. It has a good amount of vibrancy that it makes playing on this enjoyable to the eye. The display produces 300 nits of brightness which I find to be adequate in most monitors. A little drawback is that if you happen to lower the brightness below 30% and have the backlight at about 100%, you will notice that the general dark areas in games look really dark and it's hard to see enemies inside buildings. So here's a quick game replay that I captured when I was not recording with my camera. So the outside looked fine until I ran inside a building. You can increase the contrast up to 100% and that will help a little but generally it will still be a little too dark. So this is not an issue if you're playing in a well lit room and you typically keep your monitor above 40% brightness. I mostly keep my monitors at around 30-45%. to 45%. On the Scepter monitor, 30% is still a little too bright for me so that's why I took it down to 25% and that's when I noticed that it was a little too dark in some areas. So you will have to keep the brightness above 35% so you don't come across this issue. This doesn't really happen on IPS panels, I can take the brightness down to 10% and even then everything is well balanced. So that is something to keep in mind with this VA panel. Now this game does offer some presets like FPS and that is very bright but you can see everything just fine. You also get RTS, Standard, User, where you can customize the settings on your own, Movie, and Eco. This offers AMD FreeSync Premium which eliminates screen tearing by matching your compatible graphics card refresh rate with the monitor refresh rate. You will get a fast response time of 1 millisecond which is great for gaming and on top of that 240Hz refresh rate which is awesome. This is my first time trying out a 240Hz monitor and so far I am loving it. My character movements feel really smooth and there's little to no motion blur in fast paced games. There's also no ghosting effect or any trailing effect that I notice on here. With the 240Hz limit I am able to get an average of 180 frames per second while playing Apex Legends. I am more of a casual gamer but if you are a more competitive gamer then you will value the insane performance that this monitor offers more than I do. So this comes with the navigation buttons on the left side and you can quickly increase or decrease the monitor's volume with the bottom buttons. I would have preferred it if it could adjust the brightness instead. In the menu you can adjust the picture by increasing or decreasing the backlight, brightness and contrast. You can also turn on DCR from there that will automatically adjust the contrast and backlight to give you the best image depending on what you are viewing. Under color you can adjust just that, the color profile and tweak the saturation. You can turn on the overdrive and free sync under the system settings. A cool thing is that this monitor includes speakers but they don't sound that great or that loud. You have to bring the volume to above 30% to be able to hear your show or movie well. So the speaker is decent and it's there if you need it. So here's a quick audio test so you can get an idea of what it sounds like. Your true 
Overall, this monitor looks really good and performs great. I would recommend checking this monitor out if you want a top of the line gaming monitor. So I will leave it at that and I will leave the link in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. So thank you all for watching. And if you found the video helpful, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more tech related videos. And I will talk to you on the next one.